Juan Arellano was considered the most creative and gifted among the first generation of Filipino architects. Manifest in his body of work are consistent judicious planning and a style sifted from fanciful eclecticism and revivalism. Juan Arellano was born in Tondo, Manila to Bartola de Guzman and the master builder Luis C. Arellano. With his father's sudden death when he was only 13, he quit his studies at the Ateneo de Manila to work at the Bureau of Lands as a draftsman. At the same time, he studied painting under Lorenzo Guerrero after office hours. When he was 18, Arellano ran away to the United States to study architecture. There, he found work, first as one of the many Filipinos who were displayed at the Jamestown Exposition, and later as a photograph colorist at a commercial museum in Philadelphia. A couple took interest in him and decided to sponsor his education at the Philadelphia Academy of Art. In 1906, he enrolled at the Architectural School of the Drexel Institute in Philadelphia. After graduation, he and his two American friends went on a tour of Europe. A year later, Arellano returned to the United States and finished a postgraduate course in architecture at the University of Pennsylvania. He pursued further studies at the Beaux-Arts School in New York, enhancing the influence of the Paris École de Beaux-Arts tradition on his style. Arellano returned to the Philippines to become one of Manila's most important architects. With his equally esteemed brother Arcadio Arellano, he worked on such projects as the Casino Español and the Gota de Leche building, modeled after a Renaissance icon, the Ospedale degli Innocenti Orphanage in Florence. Afterwards, he worked at the Bureau of Public Works, rising from the ranks as an assistant, supervising, and finally consulting architect, a position he held until 1936 when he resigned to begin private practice. Arellano steered the development of Philippine architecture from its neoclassic phase to its proto-modern or art deco and streamlined modern and nativist phases. He was also a painter, an aquarellist of note. His 1913 work, Forest, is considered one of the first Impressionist paintings by a Filipino artist. Some art historians believe that he was instrumental in conditioning the climate for modernism to flourish in the country. Like many U.S.-trained architects in the early 20th century, he came under the influence of the Paris École de Beaux-Arts and promoted the neoclassic style. This can be seen in his major works, such as the Legislative Building, defined by Corinthian columns lining a vast colonnade and pilasters supporting every wall of the edifice. The post office building echoes Greek Ionic columns which soar over a portico. The Renaissance-inspired Villamore Hall of the University of the Philippines, now the Supreme Court building, had an antechamber dominated by sculptures of the Muses of Music and of Art by Guillermo Tolentino. In contrast, the Metropolitan Theater, built in 1931, combines art deco and local forms such as batik, bamboo stalks, mangoes, and hibiscus. These four buildings were destroyed during the war and rebuilt according to Arellano's original plans. Arellano's virtuoso articulation of neoclassicism assumed international stature, 
receiving world acclaim in a competition held in New York where he submitted a design for the Bank of the Philippine Islands. Through his famous monumental works of neoclassicism and the Philippine architectural scenography, he imbued the American form of government and civic culture with presence and made unmistakably palpable its imperial aspiration in reinforced concrete. To some extent, Pax Americana in the Pacific translated into a global urbanism of a neoclassical standard and a civilizational dynamic built on the marmorial tradition of the age. Arellano interpreted and appropriated the grammar of Bozar in the context of the tropics, successfully uniting two architectural idioms in structures that show imaginative hybridity. Again, as with his predecessors, this aesthetic choice was in cadence with Burnham's urban directives, the logic of space in which imperialist time dwelled. His architecture teaches us a lesson or two about indigenization, which, as is evidenced here, is not simply a matter of nativist will and pride, but also an imperialist strategy appealing to pastoral nostalgia. As the consulting architect of the Philippines and later in private practice, he designed many notable structures all over the country. He also initiated the master plan of the University of the Philippines Diliman campus and authored projects in Banawe, Ifugao, and Cotabato. Arellano was credited with appropriating Western architectural styles while responding to local requirements. Resorting to stylized native motifs and forms in his works, he thus contributed to a highly nuanced idiom of neoclassic, art deco, and nativist aesthetics in Philippine architecture. Arellano conducted extensive studies to enhance the Burnham plan. He designed the landscape of certain sections of Manila, particularly Padre Burgos Avenue, Harrison Park, North and South Port areas, Dewey, now Rojas Boulevard, and the Malacanang grounds. It was at this point that Arellano as a painter, a venturesome impressionist, found convergence between architectural space and the landscape of his works in painting. In the midst of his stellar career, Arellano raised a family with his wife, Nati Ocampo. They had one son, Oscar. In December 1960, at the age of 72, he passed away. The evident modernity of Arellano's signature marks the history of the city of Manila in the present-day Plaza Lawton, where Arellano truly made his mark, with structures from the Pasig River, beginning with the post office, to Taft Avenue, including the Supreme Court. But it is from the islands of the archipelago where the architect divined and drafted signs of the native, producing a more progressive modernity.